Today we're looking at Lesson 5.7, Making Space. Our objective today is given a linear inequality, I can correctly graph the solution set in two out of two problems. So in the last lesson, we looked a little bit at linear inequalities in a context, and we graphed some points to try to figure out which ones worked and which ones didn't. Today we're going to be working specifically from the equation version of the inequality. So we have one variable inequalities and two variable inequalities. These are the ones we're going to be focusing on in this unit with two variables. But we talk about them a little bit differently. You'll notice over here in the one variable inequalities, we use a number line. So we can represent the range of values that satisfy this inequality on a number line. So the values 4, 5, 6, and everything on up, as well as the values in between, like 3.5, or 4.7, or anything up like 10.3. Any of those will satisfy this inequality up here. But when we have an x value and a y value, a simple number line won't work because it won't tell us whether it's the x value or the y value. We actually have to have values for both. So in that case, we use a coordinate plane, where we have an x-axis right over here, and we have a y-axis up here. And whatever values we have for the coordinate pairs in the shaded region, that tells us those are solutions to this inequality. Those are values that satisfy this constraint. So let's look at how we might create a graph from one of these inequalities. So here we have y is less than or equal to 2x minus 1. And we're going to have some steps for graphing an inequality. It's going to be very similar to graphing the equation, the equation that would look like this, where we replace the inequality symbol with an equal sign. But we're going to have a couple more steps. So the first thing we do is plot two points for the line. Now we can do this the same way we have been doing this all along. We have our slope and we have our y-intercept. Our slope is still 2 because we're in, in slope-intercept form. And our intercept is negative 1. So we'll start at our y-intercept. And then we're going to go up 2 and over 1 because that's our slope. Up 2, that's our rise of 2, run of 1. So up 1, 2, over 1. And we'll put a dot there. But we don't draw the line quite yet. The next thing we need to do is determine whether we're drawing a dotted line or a solid line. So similar to when we were doing number lines in single variables, if we drew an open circle, remember we had number lines, and we drew an open circle, that meant we don't include that number. If we drew a closed circle, that meant we do include the, the number. Same idea with these dotted lines and solid lines. This is we don't include that entire line. We don't include the boundary. If we draw it as a solid line, then we do include that boundary. So same idea if we have the equal sign, we draw a solid line. If we don't have the equal sign, we draw a dotted line. So let's look at this problem we're working on. Notice we do have an equal sign here. So that means we're going to draw a solid line. So we can draw a solid line through these two dots, and that will give us our boundary line for this problem. So let's draw a line kind of like that, and we'll extend it down further. So something like that. This program isn't great for drawing really exact lines on the graph, but that's pretty close. So we plotted two points, we drew our solid line in this case, and our third step for graphing inequalities is going to be to shade it now. We need to decide whether we shade below the line or above the line. And the trick on these is to say, are we talking about y is less than the line we graphed, or is it greater than the line we graphed? Well, if you look up here, you can see our y value is on the small side of our alligator. Remember if we draw our little alligator, put little eyes on him here, 
alligator eats the bigger side. That means our line, our definition of our line will be the bigger side. And our y values, the things we're going to shade, are going to be on the smaller side or going down below the line. So since y is on the small side of the alligator, that means we highlight below the line. Here we go. So we're going to highlight this entire area down here and shade it in. Now I'm not going to take a lot of time to shade. You can see basically this is the area. So we shade the area below the line. Let's try another one. Okay, we need to graph y is greater than negative 2 fifths x plus 4. Where shall we begin? Well, we need to plot two points, so we're getting our slope and our y-intercept. Our y-intercept is 4 and our slope is negative 2 over 5. So we can plot this y-intercept on the y-axis right there. And then for our slope, we go down 2, right 5. Go down 1, 2, right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll put a dot there. Okay, we've plotted our two points, so we're done with that step. Now we ask, is this a dotted line or a solid line? Another way of asking that, is there an equal sign in our inequality symbol? I don't see any equal sign here, so that, that tells us we're going to do a dotted line. Dotted line. And so I will draw a dotted line between these two dots. It's not perfectly straight because I did that freehand, but you get the idea. Our final step here is to shade. So now we need to decide, are we shading above the line or below the line? So remember, we're shading our y values. We're going to ask, is the alligator eating the y values or is it the alligator eating the line? Looks like in this case, the alligator is eating the y values which tells us we're going to go up. Y is the bigger value, so we're going to go above the line. And we shade those values above the line, up here. So in order for this shading method we're using to work, we always need the inequality to be in slope-intercept form. It looks something like this. y, mx, and b. We have y over by itself on one side. And the reason for that is, remember, we're looking at the y values, and we're saying, you know, is the alligator eating the y value or is the alligator eating the line? And if the y isn't by itself, then we can't use this anymore. We can't tell whether it's below the line or above the line. So we should always get y by itself first, and then we should be able to use this rule for shading. Less than will be below the line, greater than should be above the line. But what do we do if it isn't in slope-intercept form already? If we're supposed to always graph in slope-intercept form, how do we get it from this form into slope-intercept form. Did we have a way of doing that? We did, actually. We were able to get it into slope-intercept form by solving for y. So remember, if we have multiple variables and we're solving for a single one, we're going to circle our variable of interest. We will highlight our other terms on the same side, and then we just do our same solving steps that we always do to get it by itself. So we're going to get rid of the term that's further away by adding it to both sides. Let's see, we can draw our line here. These x's will cancel. We get 2y is less than or equal to, and I'm going to write the x term first just because that fits our slope-intercept form over here, x, mx plus b. Now we have one more step to get y by itself. We're going to divide both sides by 2, because that's the inverse operation of multiply. Divide the side by 2 as well. Our 2's cancel, and we get y is less than or equal to 
x over 2 plus 6 over 2. So all we did there was we just split this denominator out into two terms. Now if we want to write this exactly in slope-intercept form, we'll bring this one-half out front, right? Because we have a 1 here, 1 times x on top. So this could be 1 half x, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now we have it in slope-intercept form. We have m equals 1 half, and b equals 3. We know how to graph that. Plus we have y by itself, which tells us which side we're going to graph, or we're going to shade. We're going to shade below the line because it's on the small side of the alligator. All right, so we can graph this. Notice we added a step for graphing the linear inequality. We're going to solve for y first if we need to, and then we go through our normal steps. We already did that part. Now we plot two points. Remember our slope here is 1 half, our y-intercept is 3. So there's our y-intercept, and our slope tells us we go up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2, 1, and then over 1, 2, we put a line there. We plotted two points, so now it's asking dotted or solid line. Do you see an equal sign here? We do have an equal sign, so this is going to be a solid line, and we're going to draw a line between those two points. That didn't want to draw it very close at all. There we go. That's much closer. So now we've drawn our solid line. Our last step is to shade. We ask, do we shade above or below the line? We have our little alligator. He's eating the line. So the Y is on the smaller side. The Y that we're shading is below this line. Everything below this line, including the line, the line is solid, so we're going to include everything on that line. This whole region is solutions to this inequality. So you could take any coordinate pair in here, 0, 0, 2, negative 3, any coordinate pair inside the shaded area. We could go to negative 2, 1, we could go to 4, 4. If we plug those numbers in, any of them would work in this inequality. All right, so let's revisit our old friends, Carlos and Clarita, and their pet sitting business. And they're still working on figuring out how many cats and how many dogs, what mix they should do for their business. And in the last lesson, we looked at some options based on their cost constraints, how much they could spend on the cages for the pets. So we had some combinations that were under their budget, some combinations that were over their budget, and combinations that were exactly on their budgets. budget. And we found that it graphed a line and we shaded everything underneath it so they could potentially choose any combination on or under this line. But they actually have other constraints too. They have other considerations they need to make when choosing how many cats and dogs they can house. And one of these considerations is how much space they have available. Remember, they're going to put these cages in a shed. So in this shed, they have 360 square feet available, and they need to leave a little space to move the cages around, so they can't fill quite all of the 360. Each cat pen requires 6 square feet, and each dog run requires 24 square feet. And we want to know what combinations of cat pens and dog runs would satisfy these requirements. How would we figure this out? Well, let's see. We need this to be under 360, maybe less than 360. That sounds like an inequality problem to me. So let's see if we can write an inequality for this. Well, each cat pen requires six feet. Remember, we've been using x as our cat pens and y as our dog runs. 
So if we have six feet per cat pen, that means we'd have six x square feet for all of the cat pens. Six times the number of cat pens. Similarly, for dog runs, we'd have 24 times y, the number of dog runs, times 24 square feet each. And we need to compare all of that space used to the 360 square feet we have available. Now, which direction should this go? Do we need the space used to be less than 360, or do we need it to be greater than 360? Well, we need to use less than 360 square feet, right? Because we can't use the whole thing, and we need to leave a little bit of space. So the space used needs to be less than, alligator needs to be trying to eat the 360. 360 needs to be bigger than how much we're going to use. Now we ask, do we have an equal sign in here? Well, no, we can't. Uh, we can't use all the 360 square feet. We have to leave a little bit of space. So this is going to be what we call a strict inequality. We do not include the equal sign. We don't include the boundary line. So this is, remember, what we called standard form. This is ax plus by, and in this case, less than c. Not slope-intercept form. Remember, we always want to graph in slope-intercept form, so we're going to do this first step, solve for y. Here we go. We circle our y variable. We highlight our other terms so we know what we need to get rid of. And we do the opposite operation of the term that's furthest away. So we're going to subtract 6x from both sides. On the left side, I have 24y. We don't flip the sign when we subtract. And on the right side, I have negative 6x plus 360. Once again, I just wrote the x term first. Our last step to get y by itself, we shall divide both sides by 24. These 24s cancel. We get y on the left side. And again, I'm going to split this into two separate terms. We have negative 6x over 24, and then we have 360 over 24. So we just split up that denominator into two separate terms. Now this first term, we can reduce the fraction because both of these are divisible by 6. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. 24 divided by 6 is so we get negative 1 fourth x, and then 360 divided by 24, we might need to do that in our calculator, I believe that is 15. So that is our slope intercept form now that we need to graph. Our y intercept is 15, our slope is negative 1 fourth, and we have a strict inequality, no equal sign on it. So here we go. Let's graph this. This can be solved for y. Now we're going to plot two points. Our y-intercept is 15, and our slope is negative 1 fourth. Now be careful on this graph we're looking at here because our scale is a little bit different. As we go up the y, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so we're, each line is 1. As we go on the x, however, we have 10 in 5 lines, so this is going to go up 2's, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So our scale is a little different, but we can handle that. We just remember this is 2, this is 4, this is 6. So we're going to go down 1 for our slope and over 4. There's 4 right there. So now we ask, we've plotted our two points, is this going to be a dotted line or a solid line? This says strict inequality, no equal sign, so this looks like it should be a dotted line. And so we'll draw a dotted line down, 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 all the way down. to there. Again, that's not perfectly straight, 
So I just drew that freehand, but pretty close. That's what our line should basically look like. So there's our dotted line. And our last step, we're going to ask, are we shading below or above the line? Our Y is on the smaller side of the alligator. So that tells us we're going to shade below that line. So we shade below. This will take just a second to fill this all in. And that is our solution to their space constraints. Everything in the shaded area, all those points are possible combinations of cats and dogs that they could house in the shed. So let's look at some options in there. Let's see, like 20 and 5. So they could do 20 cats and 5 dogs. Or they could do 10 cats and 10 dogs. Or they could do 40 cats and 3 dogs. They could do 50 cats and zero dogs. They could do 14 dogs and zero cats. So all of those are options that work for their space constraints. Anything in the shaded region is a combination that would work inside their shed. So in the last lesson, we did a cost constraint. It looked like this. We came up with that inequality. Today we did a space constraint with this inequality in that graph. But it would make sense that we'd actually have to fit in both constraints, right? Because they need to fit within their budget and they need the cats and dogs to fit inside the shed. So both constraints need to be considered. So how might we figure out which combinations would satisfy both constraints, both cost and space constraints? Well, we have a graph over here and a graph over here. What if we just graph them on top of each other? And this is why we tend to use highlighters that are a little bit translucent so we can see through what we colored. And we can see this area right here is shaded both orange and blue. So the overlapping region satisfies both constraints. This little bit over here, this orange by itself, that's only satisfying the cost constraint, not the space constraint. This area over here that's just blue is opposite. It satisfies the space constraint, but not the cost constraint. So if we want both of them to be satisfied, we have to look at the overlapping region here. So let's find three combinations of cats and dogs that they can house that would work within these constraints, both of these constraints. Notice we can write these constraints as a system of inequalities like that. And all we need to do is just find three points inside the shaded region. So I'm just going to mark just some random points here, like this one. And then let's figure out what those are. Let's see, this is two, four, six, and 10. So we could do six cats and 10 dogs, that would work. Or we could do, this is 12, and this is two, four, six. So we could do 12 cats and six dogs. Or this last one you see over here is right on the line, but since it's a solid line, it works. Notice on the dotted line, that would not work. We can't do that one right there. But since this is a solid line, this one does work. So this is 30 and then two, four. We could do 30 cats and four dogs. Any of those combinations would work for both how much we could spend on the cages as well as how much space we have inside the shed. So that's how we figure out combinations for multiple inequalities. We just look for the region that is overlapping both of them or all of them listed. So that wraps up today's lesson, and we are back to today's objective, which is given a linear inequality, I can correctly graph the solution set in two out of two problems.